Hey guys, Redstone Without Limits here again, and we're going to get started on the CPU. We're going to make make it based off of this schematic here, this little simple schematic. But yeah, so we're going to get started. Now, the first thing I want to start out with is the accumulator, since it's right in the top left hand corner, left hand corner. And this is going to be 4 bits, so not too much to work with, but still um, a good amount. So we're going to make this out of, or we're going to make the accumulator out of black wool. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have um, our little repeater locks. So these will store the data that comes in. Now mind you, this will not be um, very quick. Um, and for wires, we're going to use the stone just like we did in the other, um, in the schematic. Right, so I'm just going to do this. All right, so there's uh, four lines. Well, wait. Before I do this, I probably want to measure out how many blocks I'm going to need. So we're going to need this repeater lock, and this one's going to have to have a block up. And I placed that wrong. So yeah, that's going to need a block up for the um, the read line. Okay. So this is going to go across here. Just going to kind of bump every time. So then we're going to go two blocks out and two blocks out. Perfect. Okay. So. Now what we need to do is we need to have um, more repeater locks. So these are the other four for the system. Since this is 4-bit, there is 4 bits. So um, if we look on the, uh, the system there, we can see that we have an out and an in. So the out and the in will probably not be on the same sides, but you'll get the idea. It's it's gonna be a very it's gonna be a simple CPU. So we're gonna have these lines going out, right? And we're also gonna have AND gates on the inputs of this so we can enable it whenever we need to so if you remember back in the comparator video we showed you the um, uh, the AND gates that you can make so these AND gates are going to act as basically toggle switches so what you do for that is um, basically you have your input right there inverted and you put it on subtraction mode like so you place these and then basically what I'm gonna have is a line that goes across that that's going to tell it whether um, to let through a signal or not so let's uh, let's get some wool or no a uh, torch So uh, that's the way that's going to work. So this will be the input of our accumulator. Like so. So this is basically um, where the input of the control unit is going to go. And I'll explain that, or the program memory rather. The control unit will probably be um, somewhere over here, but I didn't add that in the, the diagram, so uh, it'll be pretty easy to explain because it's not really that crazily complex. So what we do here is we need to um, finish putting these lines across. 
That's going to be the end of that. So it's just going to go into that, uh, the first repeater, the locking repeater. So we're going to place the torch here. Let's see, does that stretch? Yes, it does. Cool. Now, um, this is basically the accumulator done. And we just have the output here. Like so. Basically, anytime uh, we want to load something to the accumulator, then we'll let it through and then um, we'll clock it. Clocking is basically just sending a pulse through to this, um, this here. So I'm going to show you an example of clocking. So let's say we wanted to load a value. We would just hit it real quick. So that, hopefully that makes sense. So uh, on the output, we're going to have one other enable line. And this enable line is going to make sure that we're not automatically like reading the value that's coming out of the accumulator. Like, uh, unless we wanted to just load it back into there. Like so. Okay, so then we turn these on subtraction mode just like we did in the other part. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a line going across here just like in the beginning. And it's just going to enable or disable a line. So, and this is going to go right here, and for the moment, we are done with that until we hook it up to the control line. So, what this is supposed to do, if you remember the last video, it's going to take data in. So, say we, we have a um, value like 5. No. Yeah, there we go. So we have a value like 5 and we want to load it in. So what we're going to have to do before we load it in, we're going to have to first um, enable the accumulator. And what you do to do that is you would enable and then clock it, like so. So now that data is um, not going out of the system yet. It is simply um, being stored and then whenever the system requests it, which that'll be handled by the control unit and the program memory mixed together. So whenever the system requests it, let's say it wants to load the value to uh, the ALU and it wants to perform a operation on it, like addition. Then you'd go over to the ALU and um, I don't have the color of wool, but Anyway, you, you would go over to the ALU and you would um, basically enable one of these, letting the data through. And that would be it for that. So you would have a command that you would call load from accumulator to ALU. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you like it, then go ahead and like it. If you um, want to see more, then go ahead and subscribe. But that's it for me. Uh, I'll be expanding on these topics later on if uh, you put a comment in the description. And I will see you. Bye.